Hey, Spuddies, Peterbeck Whiskey here, and welcome back to Let's Play Europa Universalis 4. I got it right this time. We're playing as Yemen, and uh, we're in the middle of a war with Ethi. Oh, no, sorry, Adal. And we're not really looking for a huge amount from this war. We're just going to, like, take a little bit of their land and stuff like that, and then we're going to be setting up basically for the next war. We also have a war with Ethiopia coming up once this uh, truce is up in about six years. So that'll give us some time to recover from this treasury issue we're having. Havering? Uh, forgive me for saying that inappropriately, or incorrectly rather. Uh, we take we took a loan, not ideal. Don't want to be taking loans. It's basically money burnt down a well. I kind of mismanaged my income a little bit, and uh, it's showing. Yeah, interest is really bad. But we should be fine in the long term. Uh, you need to deoccupy. Oh. You need to go there. You need to deoccupy it. I'm doing a little bit of management. We're kind of just trying to, like, clear out some of these forts. I really just don't... I'm just kind of waiting for them to be amenable to peace, which should not be too long. I just need a few more provinces occupied. Once uh, once I deoccupy a lot of this, this will probably do it, really. Especially this fort right here. Oh my... God, I've never seen a 78% chance. How badly... Did you roll, like, so poorly? My word. Mora has come under the occupation of Yemen. Let's see if we can pick up a few kills. Uh, tempting. Tempting to do this. Really, really tempting. Let's see if we can't capture some of these guys. Okay, we took over this province. Let's continue to... Let's grab the fort. How close are you? Okay, so they will take peace, and I can even force a little bit more cash out of them. So this will hopefully net me some tasty, tasty cash. So I took the two provinces that I wanted... I'll core them now. They're not they're not really special provinces in any sort of respect. They're just they're the kind of provinces that I wanted. So you can get over there. Uh, now we need to be ready to uh, repay this loan. Uh, it's kind of like a waste of 73 remaining interest. But we'll clear out that loan. The uh the war reparations are gonna be super useful. We've got a plenty of war rep reps going on now. But yeah, those war, war reparations are going to help pay for the, uh, the things that we have going. Now, we are still <sighs> hemorrhaging cash. I think that's because I have a level 3 advisor in here. So let me think. It's also because we're reinforcing. So once we stop reinforcing, we should be okay. So we can start drilling. Drill, 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 drill. Need to get my income up somehow, and it's probably going to involve getting ahead of time with all of these again uh, in a year or two. I believe we can go up to speed four now. We're getting through. I, th I feel like we're getting through the game at like a reasonable pace now. We're definitely in the age of absolutism, quite deep into it. I would have liked to be doing better in this respect. We almost have half a point of discipline, which is very nice, and we are also getting pretty close to getting discipline up here at quality ideas. Now, are there any other policies I want to add in? Not really. Oh, we lost a general. That's unfortunate. I think that was my last really good general. So let's recruit another one. Ugh, he's a bit weak. Yikes. Not ideal. Super not ideal. But we can we can live with it. We can deal with it. And we can make our way along. Still bleeding money because we're um, reinforcing. Should finish reinforcing either this month or... Well, not probably just a couple of months away. This army should be finished reinforcing next month. Which should start bringing that price down. But I put these guys into debt. So they're going to be hurting for a while. And we can look into turning on Egypt now. Uh, we still have plenty of claims on Egypt. Oh no, we lost all of our claims. Ooh, that's not ideal. We want to fabricate more on them then. We've been building a spy network in here for a long time. But next month we'll claim Sinai. We want to start closing off some of these. And uh, see if we can't push for a better uh, outcome. We've got five years to fabricate claims here. Let's grab Sinai. Skadoosh. I mean, I should probably look and see which one is like the most expensive thing, but I think it was actually Sinai that time. No, Sinai's only three, never mind. But yeah, I just want I just want claims. I want to claim all these things. I'm gonna leave this to the Ottomans, and I'm hoping to keep a relatively small border with the Ottomans. Otherwise, we might start getting uh border negatives. Yeah, border friction is already happening. We have like that little bit of border friction. Which uh, is causing some issues. Like, if I look at the Ottomans, uh, their desires. 
They still desire little chunks of my land, which is, you know, not what I would call ideal. But once we have Alexandria, I'm really excited that we can actually get control of Alexandria um, and, and get up in here and, and get all this, this tasty, tasty land. There's so much tasty land in here that we can make really, really good use of for uh, for these trade companies. I mean, like, who owns this node? The Ottomans have a good chunk. I have actually a pretty big chunk of this, although I'm not really doing anything with my chunk, I don't think. Um, but yeah, I want, I want this. I want it. I want it to be mine. We almost have control of this, where we can establish communities. Right now we're doing improved inland routes. I think I'm going to go back to maximizing profit here. And if I click on this, that should improve my income. Okay, so like, let's see. Made this unit union will, so the Nabani family will consider us in debt. Or I could gain prestige. I'm going to take the base tax. I like these, like these, these, these little mission things with the, um, Seed of a Strong Aristocrats. That's really great. I love this whole, I love this aspect of the gameplay because it adds a bit of dynamic sort of, ooh, do I have to make this decision? And it kind of adds a little bit of a storyline to the game too, which is really nice. And I think it's probably, I think the storytelling through the event system is probably one of the most untapped things that the developers could really tap into. And I like that, because these events seem pretty new as far as I can tell. I like that they've been tapping into them more and more. Because you could do some really crazy storytelling stuff. Um, if you go deep into this. Hold on. Why, why are we still bleeding? Are we still hemorrhaging cash? Navies? Fort maintenance. Is my navy not uh, guarding? Ah, that's why. Navy, go back to protect trade in Goa. This will give me 3.7 profit. All right, let's do that in Goa. Once my ships get over there, my profit rate should... Increase... Oh, embargoed by Gujarat. Hold on, Gujarat. Can I embargo you back? Hmm. I don't understand how an embargoes work. End of religious turmoil. You are my... You are my rival, right? Yeah, he's a mutual rival. Yeah, we're losing our claims on Egypt, which is a bit unfortunate. We'll 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 get them back. Don't worry about it. Okay, it's time to invest in technology. Boosh. 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 So now we're ahead of time in a lot of different ways. And we got access to the Galliot. Which is a uh a galley. Funny enough, the Galliot is a galley. Now, the Great Mosque. Ooh. Oh, we have superior unit types. No, it's not infantry. It's not cavalry. It's a leather cannon. The leather cannon was first used by the armies of King Gustavus II, Adolphus of Sweden, during the Third Polish-Swedish War. European artillery at the time was too large and heavy to be mobile on the battlefield, and was only really used during siege. The introduction of a lighter mobile cannon, cannon enabled the Swedes to maneuver their artillery to meet the movements of the enemy and gave them a distinct tactical advantage over their foes. Unfortunately, the leather cannon used by the Swede, Swedes had a particular weakness which made it highly impractical. Consisting of a narrow copper tube covered in leather, strapping and rope, its wrapping caused the cannon to overheat dangerously during continuous use. Nevertheless, the leather cannon marked the beginning of the development of light field artillery and the concept of taking heavy firepower to the enemy. So, we'll go ahead and we'll pick up the leather cannon. Exciting. I, I didn't... I, I forgot that there was like these little blurbs underneath those things. I should read more of those. Oh, what else? Oh, the musket charge cavalry. Or the al Sharid reformed cavalry. I like the idea of the offensive charge. So we will take that here. The Emir's estate modifier Gujarat has been discovered while building a spy network inside of us. Okay. We have a new idea possible here. And we kind of have to make some decisions about what our next steps are. I would love to get trade ideas. I would love to get expansion ideas. I would love to get economic ideas. I would love maybe admin ideas. Yeah, less so. Humanism. 
bit late to be getting humanism at this point, to be honest. We may just skip it. If I had humanism, I could have gotten one of these missions nice and early. But, you know. Yeah, I'm really, really tempted by expansion ideas. So that I can do, um, trade company stuff. Because there is a trade company not too far from me. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna be bordering this soon, and I'm not too far from wiping out some of these guys, so... I like the idea of going for expansion ideas and getting some trade companies on the go. I mean, I guess I could revoke this now. Let me think about this. I could also... Nah, exploration. Let's go for expansion ideas. Although I don't have anything to use my, um... I don't have anything to use my colonist on, do I? No, not really. Oh, I do, actually. I can start colonizing over here. Ah, yes. Okay, so we're going to want to get that up as soon as possible. Get some colonies on the go over here. Start conquering some of these guys, because these are trade regions, right? Yeah, look at that. Micro-Indonesia chapter. Ooh. I'm excited by that possibility. Uh, let's... Yep, let's invest in additional colonists. So that'll be plus one colonist, and we can also invest in naval drill. Drill. Uh, we're going to choose our native policy. I'm thinking coexistence. Yeah, let's do co hmm, coexistence. The other one is really nice. I would have to land armies over here and, and hold these if I do the other ones. And these are pretty aggressive places in terms of things, although there are kind of weaker ones. It's just a lot of micromanagement, really, that I don't want to have to deal with. So we'll go for a native coexistence policy. Let's have a look. Which is the best piece? Aha, right here. So in 200 days, he will arrive right there. This is my best spot, I think. Well, maybe over here could have been good, too. Ah, this would have actually been better. Recall. So this is 13... So I'm going to send you to here. Take you 217 days. And there we go, and we can start working on Brunei. Start getting some of these, like, nice little colonies on the go. Exciting, 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 exciting. It'll also give me borders with potentially uh, able to maybe become a naval power and sort of fight with some of these guys. You know, it has potential. Let's see, Canavita Scholar, Hanafi, Maliki, yeah, I don't really care about those. Tajura is now considered part of our patrimony, Asab is now, a great advisor has died, and diplomat, that's unfortunate. How do I get a cheap diplomat? I believe I have to talk to the emirs. And we will say, I want to recruit a minister here. This is a diplomat, okay. What about the merchant guilds? What if I were to recruit a minister? Ooh, Master of the Mint would be good, actually. Yeah, I'm going to recruit a minister. Oh, I should have checked if this was going to push them over. I might have to revoke a province off of them. Well, I may as well demand their diplomatic support. And then, um... Oh, I already gave them Monopoly Charters. Whoops! Oh, I just made a mistake. Uh, disloyal... see what's their influence coming from what's their influence 80 so what if i boosted a, a, a province or something see if i can find some cheap provinces to boost would that bring them down controlled provinces 40 percent no wouldn't bring them down i'm gonna have to deal with this uh, at some point in the future i'm gonna have a disloyal estate now They want these provinces. Yeah, I'm gonna have to pull this back. Uh, Dongola, I think, is what I'll steal. So I kind of mismanaged there, just because I was hasty and dumb. But hey, this sort of stuff happens. So this will bring their influence... ...down to a reasonable level. They'll be really unhappy with me, though. And um, they'll cause my income to hurt. So 
So now, out of curiosity, let's have a look at the Cass's bellies we have. Yemen. Or how do, how do I see who I have? Conquest on the Mamluks. Okay. So, another merchant, global settler increase, recruitment time, diplomatic relations, shipbuilding time, global trade power, and state maintenance. State maintenance will be quite useful, actually. We'll take on this Dongola. I had to prevent them from getting too powerful. The peasantry must be free from unlawful exactions. This is going to hurt my thingy from tax revenue. No, we'll move towards mysticism. That's fine. We have a rebel uprising that's going to be happening. Having a disloyal estate is annoying. Uh, colonial enthusiasm. Ooh, global settlers increase for 10 years. Hell yeah. Okay, you drill. Ulema fought syncretism. Ah, let's see. The growth of the administration. As the state and its bu bureaucracy grow, there is an ever-growing need of people to oversee and administrate the various lands and functions. The emirs have traditionally been more associated with the military services to the state, and, but have increasingly made it clear that they still expect to be first in line when government offices are being handed out. The merchant guilds, on the other hand, claim that the emirs consider such appointments as mere rewards, and will only use them to enrich themselves. Instead, the merchant guilds argue we should appoint men out of individual merit. The unexpected death of a trusted secretary has left a vacant position to be filled at the centre of this conflict, with the merchant guilds supporting one candidate, one candidate and the emirs expecting us to pick another. While both candidates, candidates are talented men, this has to be a political decision. So self-made men are what made this country, so I could potentially piss off the emirs and then give them uh, a diet. Okay, let's turn them to the Ulema. So the Emirs would lose loyalty. I could give it to the Dimi. So I think it's going to be going to the uh, Merchant Skills to get them loyal again. Oh, I can't give it to the Merchant Skills because they're, they're too influential. Yeah, I want to give it to the Merchant's Guild to get them loyal, but their influence is too high. I have to wait until their, um... The Granted Monopolies thing goes away in a, quite a few years. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn to the Ulema instead, and I'll call a Diet to get these loyal again. Okay, also I need one of these guys. Uh, who was it that I, I, I recruited? Here it is. No, wait, did I not recruit a guy? Oh, I recruited one of these. I, recru I even recruited the wrong kind of guy. I recruited a yearly inflation guy. God, I'm a dumbass. Alright, give me, give me your minister. Which one is it? It's the improve relation guy here, yep. Want to have him slotted in. We're just barely losing money. Which is an okay place to be, as far as I can tell. Okay, a little bit of mismanagement on my... F factionalism. Just got an achievement. Have three estates in your country with 70% influence each. Hell yeah, nice achievement there. So we're kind of riding the edge here in terms of uh, estates. We need to be careful about that. You get our absolutism up. I don't know if that's going to help, but it's just something in general that I want to do. Absolutism makes me feel good. Local nobility is helping. Yearly absolutism plus one would be amazing. Gives you so much discipline, so much other good stuff. I think you also get events. We're actually making cash now, just barely. Uh, the search for knowledge must be valued in of itself. We need more universities. Okay, they're claiming Beja. We also need to talk to the... Oh, we got Bayesian Separatists, too. Decline of al Mukka. The merchants that once came to our ports to procure coffee now have their options, and while al Mukka remains an important port, it's alright, it'll never be the main port for coffee in the world. No! I lost my coffee Arabica! 
That's so much money for me. That's like a big chunk of my income I just lost. Oh god. That's really bad actually. I'm gonna have to spend some points to try and bring our income back up. Yeah, I'm gonna lose army professionalism. Economic stimulation seems good. So let's go ahead and invest some points. Where am I getting good tax rates? This is going to give me some tax income. Tax income. Tax income. Where am I getting good this? Okay, that helped. It didn't really help. It helped a little. Yikes. It's uh, because of this negative trade modifier that I'm getting off these jerks. That's kind of part of what's screwing me here. I could also probably be using my navies better. I need to fight a doll off of this trade node. I should have gone for this coastal center of trade. Speaking of which, I will go for that now. I need to stop zooming in and out. I'm trying to control myself, but I'm like, <laughs> I'm like losing it. Wait, we even a, I can break alliance. Uh, let me go ahead and fabricate claim on Zyla, and I want to fabricate a claim on Angot. No, I want to do. I want to do the coastal ones. So Hargaisa. Let's talk to Egypt. I also need to fabricate some claims on you, my good friend. I'm thinking of fabricating Al Suez. Are we ready to fight yet? Ah, two more years and we're ready to fight. So your time will come. Oh yes, my vassal has been claiming. Yes. Royal marriage with Funge, I will take that. Also, we're about to finish annexing uh, a vassal here. This will hopefully help my income problem, I'm hoping, maybe. When does it finish? January 20, uh, 16, 26. Uh-oh. We got some heirs. Oh no. An embezzler. That's the wife. Okay. We need a new heir, so you're actually kind of not ideal in terms of your structure of your points. Sheik ul Islam, I think I like the tax modifier here. We lost our bonuses from legalism. That's going to help a little bit. Really just trying to survive until we get this. Um, pretty rough right now, the position we're in. Let's see, the Bajan separatists are getting ready to go up so let me see Hal, Hal, uh, Hal, ah why is the capitals Kalib is over here okay they're getting ready to uprise we'll have to keep keep that in mind and uh what else is going on Four thousand nine hundred days it took us to annex this. Okay, so the current plan is to get ready to declare war on the Mamluks and see if we can steal another little chunk of their land, and then sort of turn back and swing at Adal. Uh, the truce with these guys ends in nineteen or sixteen twenty eight, so we've got a, only a couple of years really before we. Uh... Well, is that right? Yeah, only sixteen twenty eight, so not a whole lot of time actually before these things happen, and. Copper boatmans. Yeah, we could go for this. We, we're 10 years away from hitting the military tech. Speaking of institutions, I feel like this has like increased a lot, but not reduced in price. Integration is a slow process. 
Hey! And all their land had institutions embraced. Nice one. It basically, it, it, like, basically embraced it for me. Well, with the exception of these ones, but... Hey, close enough. This should probably recalculate to be different. Uh, speaking of which, we probably have a way bigger army than we need right now. So let's have a look. Where is that 12 stack? We have a 12 stack. How much are we over? We are over by... 7. So let's find 7 units. 1... 2, 3, 4, 5, 6... Sorry. 1, 2, 3, 4... 1, 2... Is it 6 and 4? Is that how we're doing it? Is that... Yeah, I think it was 6 and 4, and then we'll delete these two little units. That's a half. That's a building block, right? That's a half block? Yeah, that's a half block. That's the same as this. Then we'll delete a couple of these as well. I don't, I don't mean to... God damn it. What's the delete key? I keep clicking on the wrong one. Okay, so... We need to lose three more units. I suppose we'll just take it off the infantry for now. Well, do I want to go off the infantry? Hmm... Cannons are more expensive to maintain, so I'm going to take it off the cannons for now. And then move these over here to meet up. Oh, you can't move because your morale is too low. Well, hold your horses and then we'll move. I was hoping that this would help with our cash flow problem, but it seems to have only served to make things worse. Ah, because we have over, over our boat limit as well. Don't need those boats. How did, how did, like, possibly... Did the cost of my empire go up here? I mean, the only thing that came was more expensive was... Um... The thingies. Alright, so let's look for places here. Farsistan will make this a place of... Covetous... Delight. Oh, estates demand control. And where else? Gulf Coast will make you an estate into a, a into a state, excuse me. And that's that really. That's all we can do. That's all she wrote, boys. Boys and girls. Pretty high autonomy in this land. Uh, maybe worth it to do something about that. We'll have a look. Let's have a look at the autonomy map mode. Al Karak. So let's reduce autonomy here. Good for the all absolutism. There we go. We're up to fourteen absolutism, almost a full point of discipline at this point. Ah, but yeah, we incorporated fires. We're still like super negative on gold, which means we may have to start reducing our um, army maintenance here again to try and get by. It does mean we don't get any drill, and we're really close to like the really good one here. Reduced damage taken by reserves. So... Eh. For now, I think that's a pretty good episode. We're almost ready to declare war on the Mamluks again, and hopefully I'll be able to extract some money out of that deal. I could also mothball some forts, but I've been kind of holding on to them because I want the uh, I want the fully maintained forts army tradition bonus, which is really nice for, you know, all the morale of armies. You get the manpower recovery speed, the recover army speed, you get the siege power. But most importantly, it makes your generals better, and generals are kind of like the big, big swinging hits in wars, I feel. But yeah, I think that's going to be it for this episode. I want to thank you guys very much for watching. I hope you guys are enjoying this series. Please remember to subscribe if you want to see more videos from me. Remember to leave a like if you want to directly support my channel. And remember to leave a comment if you want to give me your feedback. Other than that, though, I want to say I love you all very much. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.